Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Fischel, and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And today I get to share with you a program that I've been in love with for a long, long time. And it is open source. It's freely available. So if you uh, want to download it, if you're a weather enthusiast, you can do it. Uh, it's called BuffKit. And the first three letters are key, B-U-F, because it was developed at the National Weather Service office in Buffalo, New York. And uh, the gentleman's name was Ed Mahoney. And it's been revised and improved over time. I think it was originally developed uh, to help forecast lake effect snows up across the Great Lakes. And, of course, in Buffalo, that's a, a huge issue up there, uh, at least some winters. Uh, but now it's become used for a variety of different reasons. And I just thought I'd share with you a couple of them. Uh, and there's various different models that you can load uh, into this program to look at the detailed output. But... Basically, here you're looking at what we call a skew T map, and it's called a skew T chart, if you will, because the temperature line is skewed. Like, in other words, as I run my cursor up like this, the temperature line isn't straight up and down like this. It's actually skewed. And the reason it's skewed is that that temperature line has to be consistent with all the other variables that are being displayed on that chart. All the thermodynamics have to work out. And so that's why that line is skewed the way it is. So the temperature is here, and you can see that it descends very linearly up to about uh, 800 millibars, which is about maybe 6,000, 6,500 feet. And then it actually uh, uh, levels off and uh, the temperature stays the same with height for a while and then resumes its decrease up in here. This is the dew point temperature. And when these two lines are close together, the humidity is high. So it's very, very dry near the surface. And then the humidity gets higher and higher and almost gets uh, saturated up here at this level, and then it's very dry again in here. So let's move now ahead in time, and uh, I'm going to have to uh, move me in order to do that. Uh, no, actually, I don't have to move me. I can actually do this. Okay. So this is 8 o'clock tonight. I'm just going to forward on ahead here to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll look at the changes. The temperature and the dew point are now just about on top of each other the whole way up, just a little spacing up here, but not much. And so uh, it looks like it'll definitely be overcast when you get up tomorrow morning. This is for the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area, and uh, it may even be raining uh, down in our counties uh, to the south by that time. And I think uh, this particular model, the American model, is underdone. As we head on through the day here, you can see that it doesn't really show a whole lot of rain, just a single green dot. And if it was a steady rain, you'd have two green dots there. And uh, I just think it's going to be more to it than that, especially during the course of the afternoon. Uh, now, another thing you can do here is go into what we call the overview mode. And so here you're taking a look at the model output where it uh, when it is predicting precipitation. And you can see it starts to show a little bit of that by eight o'clock Saturday morning, and then a little burst here on Sunday, a little bit of a break, uh, at least according to this particular model, uh, Sunday night into Monday morning, and then it picks up again during the day on Tuesday. Uh, there's all sorts of different things you can look at here. If there were snow in the forecast, you can take a look uh, at that. Uh, there's actually a uh, parameter here. Uh, let's see if I can find this here. There it is. Uh, that this is the area of the atmosphere where the uh, temperature is such that snow crystals uh, grow optimally at that particular temperature. And so uh, if it was the winter season, we would look up here uh, to see if there was enough moisture present to make use of that. And if we saw that and there was vertical motion going on in that area, then we would be excited about the possibilities for snow. And speaking of snow, one other thing I wanted to uh, mention here is that a gentleman named Kermit Keeter, who worked at the National Weather Service in Raleigh for years and years and years, he's, uh, as far as I know, happily retired now. I need to give him a holler and see how he's doing. Uh, but uh, he helped develop this thing over here. Uh, and again, this is a winter product, but you take a look at the distance between two constant pressure surfaces, okay? And so we take a look at 1,000 millibars to 850 millibars. So everywhere along that surface, the pressure is the same. And then from 850 millibars to 700 millibars. And it turns out that you can mathematically show that when the thickness or the distance between those two layers is a certain value, that above that value, the odds favor rain, and below that value, they favor snow. And so down along the x-axis here is the 850 to 700 thickness, 
This is the 1,000 to 850 thickness along the y-axis, and it's split up into all these zones, like all snow, snow and sleet, wintry mix, freezing rain and rain, freezing rain and sleet, sleet and freezing rain, all rain. And so you actually follow a dot. If it was the wintertime, you see dots in here, and you can follow them along with time and see which zone they're in. And it's a very helpful tool in terms of predicting uh, precipitation type. One other thing. Uh, there's something with thunderstorms called Convective Available Pot Potential Energy. The acronym for that is CAPE, okay? Not like Superman's CAPE, but this is a, a different kind of CAPE. And so uh, this is uh, Saturday at 5 o'clock, and we don't have any CAPE at that particular time. But as we head on into Sunday, you see this little yellow line here? This means that when the temperature rises at this point, it becomes warmer than the environment. And it's buoyant, and buoyancy is a force. And so it starts to accelerate upward along this line here. And the bigger the distance between this yellow line and the temperature line, the more buoyancy there is and the stronger the updraft in any given thunderstorm is likely to be. And so that's a tool we look at in terms of predicting thunderstorm potential and uh, also whether or not there might be a threat of severe weather at all. So all sorts of things you can do with this. It's a lot of fun to use. And uh, again, if you want to, you can go to uh, one of those government sites and download it. I think if you do a search for BuffKit, B-U-F-K-I-T, it'll come right up. And uh, the installation process is not all that terribly hard. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed bonus weather video number two for this week. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll be back Monday with the next daily weather update and another bonus weather video coming up next Tuesday. Happy weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.